Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching another episode of How to Build an Amazing Guitar Out of Scrap Wood. In this episode, we are going to uh, fret the neck. So, um, before we get down to business though, I got a couple of housekeeping things I need to sort out and I want to answer some questions that have come up quite often. One is, um, if you'll remember, this is the neck that we worked on last time. We put the side dots in, the side dots and the face dots, and we put a radius on the board. People keep asking me, where is the truss rod uh, access? It is right here in the heel, just like it was on the vintage fenders. That's kind of the way I like doing it. Um, the other question that came up quite a bit was, how does the radius sander work if it's at an angle? The, the radius actually swings across something that is flat. Now, one guy has asked me a couple of times if you get a parabolic arc, or I forget what math term he used, but I assure you, this is a 10 inch radius all the way down. Um, there's no, no tricks, no, no anything fancy. There's no, you know, it's 10 here and it's 10.1 down here. Now it's, it's all going to be fine. And, uh, yeah, just don't sweat some of that small stuff. Um, because remember it's not just about the, what the fretboard looks like. It's how the frets get pressed in, which we're going to show you today and how you, um, how you level sand those and, uh, and recrown the frets. So don't sweat that. Um, you know, first of all, there's no issue with our tool putting a, a solid 10 inch radius on it, even though it's at an angle. If you think that there is, then okay, we can still be friends, but um, I assure you there's not. Is that okay? Let's move on to um, fretting the neck. Today we are going to be using um, my new favorite wire from Stumac, and it is the Cryo wire. It's a medium jumbo stuff, I think. Um, yeah, medium high. Um, so that's what we're gonna use. And the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to take a straight piece of it and turn it into a curved piece of it. But it's gonna be so fun. We're gonna go like this. Okay, let's get started. All right, the Stumac wire comes in a straight tube, so it's obviously not radius when you get it. So you need to put a radius on it. You could probably bash this stuff in and it would be okay, but gosh, guys, don't do it. Pre-bend the wire. You should know that. All right, let's go over to the bending machine. I'll show you how that works. All right, this is my Stumac bending rig and there's lots of people who make bending rigs, but the whole idea is that the wire comes in this way and gets bent across these wheels and you have this little turny cranky thing and it turny cranks it and changes the um, fret wire radius. I'm grabbing a piece of the wire right now. I'm doing this out without glasses, so bear with me. So you just sort of feed it in here, and you'll notice there is a groove in this wheel here that the fret wire tang rides in. And all you do is crank it, and I like to go a little oversized and then kind of bend it back. That's just me though, there's lots of ways to build guitars, right? Okay, there we go. It's as simple as that. All right, for this next step, I definitely need my danger glasses because what I'm gonna do is I am going to cut the fret wire to fit each of the fret slots and I'm going to save each of those pieces of fret wire in this little handy block that I made. I even put side dot material so I would know which one is three, five, seven, nine, twelve, et cetera, et cetera. And I put a beer opener. All right, let's get down to business. Enough of the bullshit talk. All right, I got my neck here, I got my block here, I got my wire here, I got some coffee. Let's make, let's make some moves. So I like to cut the fret wire pretty close. And to do that, I have these uh, tang nippers that I've ground down so they cut nice and square. You just cut them. Now I want to overhang just enough so I make sure I have enough fret wire and we are going to eventually undercut these frets and glue them in and it's going to be totally rad. All right, our frets are all pre-cut to roughly the right size, and now we are going to undercut the frets. We're gonna use a couple of different tools. We're gonna to use these old Klein jobs that I have here that I still really, really love. 
And what they do is they just undercut the fret wire. See there? Now that's the undercut side that I just did. And here's the side that I didn't do that I'm going to do now. And voila. And that will prevent fret sprout, which sucks. Now, you can also use these tools here. This is from Stumac. This is their newer unit and they work pretty well but there was a little bit of pilot error on my part when it came to using them but they work let's see they work well too actually that one has a little bit of a booger on it there we go see they work just fine too now some people have told me all the great ways that they do fret undercutting and why I should use their techniques. And uh, to those guys, I say more power to you. If you've got something that works great for you, use it. All right, now once the fret wires are undercut, I'm going to put them in this block here so that I don't have to have them sitting on the, um, on the, the fretboard and potentially drop all that crap because one of the things I like to do and you should too is check each fret and make sure your undercut is enough uh, you got enough undercut you know what I'm saying and you should do this if you're um, well if you're binding the neck you absolutely should be undercutting um, unless you're doing that Gibson style of binding that um, goes over or the binding goes over the fret wire. But even if you're doing this on a non-bound guitar, um, it prevents a lot of the little crap from sprouting out as weather changes. So sometimes you get, you know, some little turds that want to cling to the to the fret wire. We'll call those cling-ons. And I just kind of pull those back with um, with a set of snips. All right. As you can see, I have all of my frets ready to go and my fretboard is ready to go. Um, we are going to be pressing these in using an Arbor press, but I will probably use my fretting hammer to just tap the, uh, the ends in. In fact, let's just do this real quick. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use the plastic side. I'm gonna tap on the ends and just get everything seated It'll look a little bit like that, and then we'll go ahead and press them in on the Arbor Press, and then we'll glue them down. <clears throat> but I want to talk about why my neck is not shaped yet and why it is flat on the back. Um, mostly because I want a nice uh, flat surface for the, uh, the neck to ride on the Arbor Press. And uh, it's consistent and it's ready to go. Now, you don't have to use uh, a flat back like I do. You can, you can use a, a radius block or, or, or a neck cradle in your arbor press if you want. Um, people have asked me, hey, aren't you worried about the, you know, the, the neck going all kinds of haywire after you carve it, after it's already fretted? And uh, in a word, no, I'm not. Um, especially on a neck like this, and uh, this is a three-piece maple neck that is really super dry already. I'm not worried about it. I live in Colorado where everything's really dry. Um, I know, I know that Paul Reed Smith says that that can happen, so I have every reason to believe him, but um, I just don't worry about it. As a matter of fact, I even do the same thing on, um, on my set neck blanks that the, uh, the, maple, the mahogany, in this case, is one and a half inch thick. So um, it's never been an issue for me. Your mileage may vary. All right, let's press these bad dudes in. Okay, guys, here is my Arbor Press, and it's got a 10-inch um, fret press call in it. And as you can see, my neck is sitting nice and flat on my nice and flat uh, Arbor Press, I guess, shelf there. And so all we are going to do is press these dudes in, and it's as simple as that. Now there's only 20 more to go. One of the 
cool things about using an arbor press is you can actually feel the fret seat when they, you know, when you go all the way down and the, and the shoulder of the fret presses on the board, you can just feel it. You can't get that same level of um, tactile sensation with a hammer. Um, so our frets are all in and they all look great. Now we're going to clean up the edges. For that, we're going to use these nips that I got from my good friends over at Bitterroot Guitars. These were like really super cheap and they cut awesome. So let me show you. That's what the fret ends look like now. Let's take a look at the first fret. You see how much there is there? I'm going to trim, trim these guys off on the first fret and get it nice and tight. Now look, let's see if the camera will focus. I mean, it's like right up to the edge there. So that will just take a little bit of file work and these guys will be done. All right, let's snip all the rest of them off. Okay guys, that is what it looks like. Now before we do any more work to this fretboard, what we would, well, what we would normally do now is we'd clean up the edge with a file and establish the um, 30 degree uh, angle on the ends of the frets. But before I do that, I want to float some super glue into my fret slots because you can actually see through them. So we're just gonna flow super glue in through these little guys here and wait till it comes out the other end and they'll be nice and glued in. Um, then we'll backfill the, um, the, uh, the hole if there is one and um, this neck is gonna feel great when you are playing it. All right, so I just got some super glue here, some of the light, the real thin stuff. And I'm going to wick it into these holes. You can put a blob on there and you can actually see it suck in. So that's cool. I'm going to get the frets all glued in so they don't have any, we don't want anything coming loose. Just because this guitar is made out of scrap wood doesn't mean we want it to not play great, right? Now let's see. No, nope, doesn't look like any's come through yet. Let's give it one more pass. It's probably wicking down the face of the fretboard. Don't worry about that. That's not a big deal. This next got a lot more steps before it's ready to go, and cleaning up the fretboard is definitely one of them. Now you can press in the glue into the slot before you um, before you press in the frets. And that's a good way to go. All right, you see how it's already starting to come through the other side? That's cool. We're almost there, guys. What we can do now is we can actually come back through the other way. Because we know it's coming through. So like I was saying, you can, um, you can apply glue before you press the frets in, which is always a good idea, or you can do it afterward if there's no binding, or you can even wick it in from the, um, from the outside of the fret slot, that works too. But in this case, we don't have any binding, so it was just as easy to just flow super glue in from the side. Cool, cool? Okay guys, it's actually the next day. I ran out of time uh, yesterday, and, um, but I thought I should wrap this video up, and so I came in today to put an ending on it. Um, so let's see, we uh, have fretted the neck and we, we undercut each of the frets so that it would uh, reduce fret sprout and we filled in the, uh, the gaps under the frets with, uh, we flooded that with super glue and we pootied some, some um, oh, what did we use? Here it is. We used some of this stuff in the, um, just to mash them into the holes there and then, um, and then put super glue on it. And it, uh, it just, it fills that in nice and it's, it's, it just makes things nice, doesn't it? So in the next video, we are going to be shaping the neck. As you can see, it is still nice and flat. Um, and in the video after that, Mike will be here and we will be doing some painting on this body. So this has been, uh, this has gone through two rounds of sealer. Um, actually, I had a couple questions about, about sealer and what it does. Um, as you know, one of my big pet peeves is when people use the terms nitro and poly, and they don't really know what they're talking about. Now, 
if you use those terms and you do know what you're talking about, that doesn't bug me. I'm kind of weird like that. People think when they when they when they say poly, they they think they're talking about polyurethane, but what they're actually talking about is polyester. This body has been sealed with a polyester resin, and it is from the good people at Simtech Coatings. We've done a bunch of videos on um, Simtech Coatings and their Easy Sanding Sealer, which is a polyester resin. Um, now, the, the problem with polyester resin is that it's normally associated with Everybody uses this stuff, guys. But it's normally associated with imported guitars that like they just dump these things in a bucket of it or something because I have no idea how they get the thickness on onto the bodies like they do. I try and I, I can't get it. So, um, so what we do is we spray one round and then we sand it way back. And really we use that first round as like a grain filler almost because we'll sand back to the wood in a lot of cases. Then we'll go ahead and spray a second round, which this has gone through, and just kind of even everything out because we want this to look smooth and flat when it's all said and done. Um, so this will be sanded again way back. So the thickness of the polyester resin on our guitars and like Paul Reed Smith guitars and Jackson's and stuff like that is very, very thin, especially when you compare it to, um, you know, say like a Squire or something like that. Um, so not an indictment of the product as much as it's an indictment of the workforce, but you just can't explain that to people um, as easily as you might like to because they're busy saying things like poly and nitro. <laughs> anyway, um, so um, let's see. So we'll get this guy sanded all the way back and be nice and flat. You know, it actually turned out halfway decent. I probably should just go ahead and put the neck on it and be done and rock out, but we're not gonna do that. Come on now. Um, hey, by the way, this uh, 16241, we, uh, we wrote those numbers on there because that is uh, Sergeant Bishop's um, uh, helicopter number from when he was in the military. And because Sergeant Bishop is our dear good friend, we wanted to, uh, we want to at least write those numbers somewhere on, um, on the guitar. And, uh, you know, normally I like to put like little cutesy things in there. Um, you know, or like girls' names or something like that. But in this case, we put uh, Sergeant Bishop's um, helicopter number in the uh, pickup cavity. Who knows? Maybe Mike will transfer that over to the um, to the face of the guitar. Um, we'll just have to see what Mike has in mind. So, um, if you guys like this video, give us the thumbs up. And if you have any questions about what we were doing in the video, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like content like this, you might want to check out our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to help us bring you guys cool stuff like this. If you can't do Patreon though, we totally understand it. Uh, you can help us grow the channel in other ways by sharing this video every single possible place you can think of. Um, so until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching everybody. The only way